Hello everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on dendrobiums. I've been asked to do this several times and I can understand why people get a little bit confused about dendrobiums because there's so many different types. So I bought these specifically as dendrobium phalaenopsis. Um, I know that I don't have the right conditions to grow dendrobium nobilis. You have to give those a winter rest and they require very specific um, instructions about winter care. And so the dendrobium phalaenopsis are the closest things that I could find to growing the regular phalaenopsis types. So I thought I would just go over the care of these with you because they are similar to my fowls, but they're different as well because they are a different orchid species. So as you see, this is my beautiful Burana Jade Fantasy number nine. This is one of my very first spikes. This is the first spike on this plant. So I thought I would just kind of go over how I care for these. Um, I do have this collection that you see here in semi-water culture. I do kind of a semi-water culture, full water culture with them, and I will explain that as I go along. Um, so many of you asked me about fertilizing, when to fertilize, and when not to fertilize. Um, when, a, when an orchid is in spike, I believe that it does need a small amount of fertilizer just to help it to maintain the health of the plant while it's blooming. Um, I have tried it both ways and I believe that mine do better when I fertilize them, not a lot, just at a low dose, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of my 20, 14, 13. That's at about 250 parts per million if you have a TDS monitor. That's pretty safe to put on these um, while they're blooming. Um, okay, now this one here, this one right here, um, it is the same Burana Jade Fantasy number nine. And as you see, it is in bud. When they are in bud, I don't fertilize them uh, because I believe that at this point, you need to quit fertilizing when the buds are setting. When this blooms out, I will continue to do so. Um, I found that in a book that I read one time and I kind of see the um, wisdom behind that. You don't want to give it a lot of nitrogen when the buds are setting. It just doesn't need that energy at this point. Okay, this is spiking, just now starting to spike right here. I don't know what this one's going to look like, so I'm really, really excited. Do I fertilize this one? Do I fertilize this one at this point? Yes, because you have active growth. Now the canes aren't growing anymore, but you have a spike that is growing. So this one, I give the low dose of fertilizer about twice a month. When I'm saying I'm fertilizing these at this point, this is at the end of November. My temperatures back here are between, well, right now on my sun porch, it is 74 degrees. So it's nice and warm. So I do have the temperatures to support a low dose of nitrogen. So I'm telling you just a low dose a few times a month is good. Okay, now let's come over to this one. This is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. This dendrobium, I got it a year and a half ago, and um, it hasn't grown any new canes. As a matter of fact, it's just kind of sat there. It's just kind of rested. Um, when I ordered these, uh, they came from the West Coast all the way to me on the East Coast. So some of them have just grown and grown and grown, and some of them have just kind of sat there and thought, now where am I? Uh, once they go through three or four time zones, I don't blame them. I would be a little bit skeptical about growing too. <laughs> so um, you know how it is when you travel 
and you pass over those time zones, it turns you around for a little while. Same with plants. So um, I've been really, really patient with these. And I just wanted to show you, I have a new cane starting. Okay, so new growth, it's going to actively grow. This one is going to grow, hopefully, to be as tall, if not taller, than this cane. So what am I going to do with this one? This one, I'm fertilizing it. I believe that this plant thinks that it's now spring because of, you know, I have good temperatures uh, back here in my orchid room. And also, it's been a very warm fall. So this one thinks, okay, it's spring. I'm going to grow now. So I am going to give it probably a higher dose of nitrogen, slightly higher dose, a little bit more often. I'm going to give it that low dose to a medium dose. Just depends on how fast this growth does grow. Uh, two or three times in a month because we've got active growth and these canes grow very quickly. I think it's just really funny that it's the end of November and um, this is decided that, okay, now we're going to actively grow. We're going to grow a new cane, no less. So I'm going to treat this one a little bit differently. More nitrogen because this growth is going to be um, a brand new cane and the canes grow very, very quickly. So that's what I'm planning on doing with this one. Okay, this plant is a basil kiki from this plant. It came from this mother plant right here. So it has already grown its new cane for this year. Um, I got really good growth off of it. See, this is last year's. This one is taller than last year. So this one has grown all it's going to this year, as far as I know, unless it does decide to produce a new cane. So what am I doing with this plant? Because it doesn't have any active growth. It's already grown all that it's going to, as far as I know. Um, I will give this a low dose, the quarter teaspoon of 20, 14, 13, um, a few times a month just to help the plant maintain. But I'm just going to fertilize it at a low dose. Um, I believe that just a low dose of fertilizer will just help maintain the plant. And that's what I've done so far, and I've had really good results with this. Okay, so now let's talk about the water culture levels on these. I told you I did like a semi-water culture, full water culture on these. Um, what I do is once a week, I fill it up about this much. Let me give you a close-up on that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it just sit in this amount of water all week, and it will, these are thirsty plants. So what's going to happen is the water level is going to get really low. About once a week, what I do is I take the level up about twice this much, give the whole root system a really good thorough watering, and then I drain it. And then if I'm going to fertilize it, I go ahead and do it then. I always fertilize when my roots are already wet. Um, it just keeps them from getting burnt. I don't like burnt roots. And then I'm going to let that set for a day dry. And then the next day, I'm going to pour this much water in again. And that's the cycle that I go with, um, with my water culture dens. So what I've learned about growing these is they're really not hard to grow at all. As when you learn the cycle of how the canes grow, that's your main thing. When you, when you realize that once you see a new cane forming, you need to give it a little bit of extra fertilizer to get those canes to grow strong and to maintain the plant after the canes have already grown to their full size. And of course, like I said, I really do like to fertilize them a little bit while they're in bloom, but not while the buds are setting. Um, another note is um, I read and I also heard from several people who told me that um, fungicides are not good on your dendrobiums. 
So make sure that you know that little fact about them. My Catalea loves copper fungicide, but I do not put copper fungicide on these dendrobiums. Um, I was uh, told from some people who have a lot of experience with them not to do that. So I am not putting any fungicide on my dendrobiums. So I hope that this helps you all. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Just leave me a message and you all be highly favored, deeply loved, and greatly blessed. And we'll talk to you all next time.